Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Escaping Atheism. I'm Max Kobe, and with me, as usual, from Deflating Atheism is Rob. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing all right, man. All right. We, uh, just for the audience's information, we have been putting off doing a video like this uh, or on the subject of the, the of violence in the atheist community and the so-called skeptic community. And... Um, we had a lot of people giving me especially flack, the Escaping Atheism crew, the little old crew, for saying anything at all about any possibility that atheism could have, or skepticism could have anything to do with this killing. Now, I want to get out first. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about. There's a group called the Skeptic Feminists, and one of them appears to have killed the other. Uh, let me look up the story. Uh, skeptic Feminist Killing. Um, I'll find the story for that and put it up. Uh, I know multiple people who've talked to this guy, um, I, uh, uh, to these people. Let me share the screen so people can at least see, you know, the guy's face. Feminist YouTuber, the skeptic feminist, arrested for allegedly killing a woman in Colorado. What we know with reasonable certainty is that someone was shot. We don't know if this was self-defense or him going nuts. Um, but I know people who've talked to him uh, and the other skeptic feminists. It looks like he killed one of his fellow feminist skeptic atheists. Um, they keep trying to say feminism had nothing to do with it, but none of them will talk about how so-called skepticism or atheism may have had something to do with it. And have even accused us of somehow taking advantage or not being respectful to the families for mentioning this little problem. And so I've gone back and forth a bit because I've been emotional. I know people who've interviewed these, these guys, the Honey Badger Brigade that I used to be friends with, um, although most of them are basically bigotry enabling atheists and uh, Christian haters. Um, so yeah. I don't associate with them anymore. Oh, they'll be quiet about Christian hate around them. They're even aware that people they know have been assaulted and, and, very, and have been on their show even, have been assaulted and attacked just for the crime of being religious, even though they support the entire message and are good classical liberal Christian type people. Um, they don't care about that. Um, the people that have voice for men don't care about religious persecution. It's apparently a voice for uh, non-religious men who will accept uh, what atheists say is the scientific rational basis of, of, of rights. Essentially what seems to have happened to me ever since the new atheistic uh, explosion back around 2006, 2007, is that liberalism has decided, or so progressivism has decided something that liberals, classical liberals, even progressives used to say, which is that you don't discriminate against people or lie about people based on their skin color, their sex, their creed, yes. their religion. And what's happened to the skeptic, atheist, rationalist community, which I used to be a member of, by the way, although many of them will say, you are never a real atheist. That's a real... That's a real cultish thing to say. Um, no true atheist, yeah. Yeah, no true atheist. I, I, they're big on that one. Um, here's the reality. There's every reason to think so-called skepticism and atheism had a lot to do with what happened here. Um, that it had a lot to do with the violence, that it had a lot to do with the drug use, and that it had a lot to do with the crazy psychosis. And we have every reason to say that and point it out. Um, I, you know, going back about a couple of years ago when I first started trying to talk about this uh, and problems within the within so-called atheism, skepticism, realism, reality-based, rational, uh, all the buzzwords that they like to use. Um, and one of the things that's also noticed is that those of us who leave the fold are always hated. Well, yes. before Dr. Mason, as a former atheist, a former atheist, a former big skeptic, and a former guy who used to have lots of atheist friends and hung out with tons of atheists and have probably read all the same books you have, or most of them, Dr. Mason, I got to tell you, atheism is a hate movement and was from day one from the publication of Sam Harris's book, Letter to, Letter to a Christian Nation which was easily documented as full of historical lies and pseudoscience. Yes. Ditto is true for the God delusion by Richard Dawkins. Ditto is true by God is not great by Christopher Hitchens. All these men can be shown to be academic frauds, and I will do so for you anytime you want. 
And one of the main reasons this is a problem, as a former member of this community who used to care about some of the people in it, I'm not sure I do anymore. Um, I should, but I, I don't know, I can't find it anymore. You people will not look at any scientific, historical, or other evidence that there is a problem here with the movement and ideology and has been from day one. And I was there, Dr. Mason, I was an atheist, test me, I could talk just like one of you for an hour and have you fooled because I don't believe in atheism anymore. Yeah. I could do it. I was probably an atheist at least as long as you. I gave up, athe I mean, I became an atheist effectively probably around age 13, 14, 15 when I decided the Bible was garbage and that there was no evidence for God. And then I stayed mostly- You became enlightened. Huh? You became enlightened. Yeah, I became enlightened when I discovered that yeah. when I decided the Bible was a bunch of crap. And by the way, I still think I don't have much respect for Bible fundamentalists, but that's another issue. I used to, see, you know, a thing used to happen to me, Rob. For, you happened to me for the longest time. I would have atheists come up to me and just introduce themselves by saying, "By the way, I'm an atheist. Is that a problem for you?" And I used to say very flippantly, "Oh no, not at all. I used to be one too." Yeah. And we can be friends, and we don't have to talk about it. Yet I usually routinely found my atheist friends didn't want to leave it there um, and wanted to pester me. But you know what? I've gone far enough afield. I want to look at Dr. Mason's video here for a couple of minutes. And yes, we're probably going to start and stop and start and stop a few times, but we're going to stop by around the seven, eight minute mark. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this. Um, and Rob, if you want to stop it anywhere, let me know, but I'm going to let this go for a couple minutes and then we're going to comment, okay? Yeah, well, that's the thing is that you have a... Uh, uh... Uh, well, you you have a lot more involvement than I do in this community, and I have none, basically. So, so this so is this is basically you. you're going to be uh, the ringmaster here, basically. Yes, but you used to be not a Christian. You yes. Vaguely agnostic. You always thought there was God or something. Is that? Yeah. Well, uh, more than that, I was never I was never really an atheist, but I I, I was kind of a non denominational believer. And and you've already at least read things like the God delusion and crap. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. So we do know what we're talking about, Doctor Mason. We really do. When, when I when I read the argument why like God uh, almost certainly does not exist, it took me all of forty five seconds to identify three fatal flaws in the argument. So yeah, it's... my teenager who uh, declared himself an atheist when he was a teenager, uh, his reaction, just in case anybody knows it, he got from his parents was, "Oh, well, okay, you've been reading a book or something. Okay, well, let us know if you ever want to talk about that." And we left him alone. It only took him a year or two. And actually, I handed him two or three atheist books to read and said nothing. <laughs> a year or so later and said, I've decided I'm not an atheist. I'm not sure they're right. And they're way too bitter and nihilistic for me. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Christians. And by I, the way, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to derail this conversation at this point. But but I almost feel like, uh, uh, well, in fact, I know that, that the new atheist movement was... was, was basically essential for getting me from that non-denominational theism to Christianity because when this uh, uh, unforgiving glare is cast on atheism for so many years you start to realize there's nothing there it's like if there was a if there was a compelling argument here I would have heard it but but you know when, when, when it's just cast in that unforgiving uh, uh, glare you just realize just the the vacuity of it all you know at least uh Dr. Mason is starting to see it. I'm not sure the other young punks are. Anyway, I'm going to play this now, and let me know if you want to stop, Rob, but I'm probably going to let him go a minute or time or so. Let's just see. Here we go. In it time and time again that a movement starts, it starts to get momentum, pick up popularity, and folks hijack that movement and inject <laughs> their narratives and ideology into it, and thereby render the whole thing impotent with their toxicity. It happened with Occupy Wall Street and the social justice warriors. And it happened with atheism and feminism. And usually there's some defining moment where you actually just look at the whole thing and realize this movement is dead. You show anyone who's not immersed in this community, in that bubble, and ask them what they think about it, and they'll just say it's completely crazy. So, all right, I'm going to stop in there. I'm glad he's noticed how completely crazy it is and that other people aren't wrong uh, to, uh, to, to, to see it as crazy. I'm already having problems with his narrative, though. He's positing this time when atheism was a grand 
beautiful, noble, rational cause that we were going to give up the shackles of primitive religious thinking. Yes. And, and we were going to let science and rationality rule the day. Uh, the problem is, Dr. Mason, uh, that if you go to where it kicked off, and where, and as I mentioned earlier, names like Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, and Christopher Hitchens, you can show definitively that all of them use dodgy sources, pseudoscientific reason, and flat-out historical fabrications, and especially about Christianity, because it was always yeah. an anti-Christian movement, first and foremost. And uh, it even goes back, not, not, not to interrupt you, it even goes back further than that to the kind of spiritual godfather of new atheism, Carl Sagan, who, was, who did a whole lot to help propagate some of these uh, historical canards that, that atheists still use. Yeah, yeah, he was big in forming or helping to form the, the, the so-called skeptic movement. And yeah, know now, but he, he preached that Christians burned down the Library of Alexandria and that there's been a historical rift between religion and science and all that stuff. These people even believe that America went to war against Iraq in a fervor of religious fundamentalism. Yes. And their evidence for this is that George Bush prayed and occasionally admitted he listened, he tried listening to God and what he did. That, that just indicates a gross misunderstanding of what serious religious people mean about prayer and listening to God. Um, but in any case, Dr. Mason, I was here during those years. And that whole, it's, it's left way, it's, it's, it's religious right hysteria against Muslims. No, uh, it's not, that's not what happened. I'm sorry. In fact, our whole government tried really hard during the Bush years to keep it away from the name, the, the religion of Islam, which they got criticized for doing. Now it's okay to beat up on Muslims. Um, yeah rhetorically, um, which I'm never entirely comfortable with because I know Islam has a problem and yeah. I know there's a problem with Islamic radicals, but unlike most atheists, I know it's not that simple. Yeah. Furthermore, I know, unlike most atheists, that it is impossible to cure that by making everybody atheist. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, there are empirical reasons to believe that that's not the case, but yeah, we'll not get into that. Yeah, no lie. Um, here's the truth. It was always a left-wing social justice movement to begin with, sir. It was. And it was there to spread hatred and inaccurate claims about both Christianity and science in order to whip up anti-Christian hysteria in the young, which, yes. by the way, you've helped do with much of your career. Um, I don't hate you for it, but I think you ought to stop and think harder about it. This is very noticeable about you, Dr. Mason, Thunderfoot, as well as all your other former friends, skeptic, atheist, YouTube friends. None of you has the balls to talk to an intelligent religious person and get their perspective. I noticed that uh, the Honey Badger Brigade and Karen Strawn and Sargon and quite a few others have been saying the left is going to win. That it is inevitable that the left is going to win and we're going to have uh, all sorts of, you know, feminist, social justice -y things are just going to be normal. Well, mm -hmm. you may be right. You want to know why? Because people like you will not talk with smart, intelligent, religious people who are as smart and as knowledgeable as you to get their perspective. It never seems to occur to any of you to talk to a really smart Catholic, a really smart Orthodox Jew, a really smart Lutheran, a really smart Methodist, um, yeah. and ask them their perspective. You would have a lot in common with these people. You'd be shocked how many very serious Christians, hell, a majority of Christians voted for gay marriage. Or, or yeah. some, they were okay with it and they could live with it. Yet even today, we're pilloried as the ones who are opposed to it. It's yeah. uh, There's a serious problem in the atheist community with not being able to engage with people who disagree with you on fundamental things like atheism itself and whether it's even particularly rational, and whether religion is really the bugaboo you made it out to be. Which is almost a, a problem with liberalism, is that feeling that, no, we don't need uh, uh, to, to we don't need to descend to uh, uh, actually persuade people. We could just, you know, stomp our feet and demand that they agree with us. That seems much more a cast of the liberal mindset. That's right. All right, so I know I'm still ranting, but this is a subject that gets me angry because I used to. When I was the editor at A Voice for Men, before I was maneuvered out for the crime of believing in God, um, the, uh, by, the, by the guys currently running it, not Paul Elam, he's innocent of that one, um, but he knows it's what happened. 
Um, uh, I used to heavily support people like Thunderfoot and, and, and some of the other atheist skeptics on our pages. And I know he got a lot of audience from us. He, of course, we got audience back. It's not like he owes us anything. But I feel like I helped create this monster of online atheism, YouTube atheism, YouTube skepticism by being supportive of these people just because they were on our side when it came to criticizing feminist excess and feminist pseudoscience. Yeah. But one of the things I noticed, and I had con expressed concerns to the other editors, we've got too many atheists here, and atheists aren't everybody, and we should bring in some non-atheist voices. I had been working on that, but that was cut off. They don't want any anybody but ideological atheists over there within the so-called men's rights movement over at Honey Badger Brigade or ABFM or any of the others. They don't want us. They want to treat us like garbage, and they want to continue the charade that everybody's going to be atheist eventually because everybody's figured out there's no God. Yeah, you, I, mean, I, I mean, the obvious point here is that you can't work to alienate 80% of the population and then complain that the left is going to win because you don't have the numbers, you know? You don't have the numbers and you don't have the balls, apparently, to really talk to someone who will challenge you or if not even challenge you, who will just sit and say, what are the values that we share in common that we could get together? You know, I remember when I was an atheist, and I was an atheist for a long time, I made a point to still have religious friends, Christian, Jewish, and other religions, and to be nice to them and curious about their perspective. In fact, it used to be standard liberalism. I used to be a liberal. It used to be standard liberalism is you respect everybody regardless of religion. Mm. Now, atheists over the last 10 years have pushed the narrative that if your idea is stupid, we shouldn't respect it. And, and, and people like Sam Harris, Penn Jillette, I used to be, I know all these people who work. I used to be a big Penn Jillette fan. Um, not anymore. Uh, all of these people uh, changed that. It used to be that a liberal said, wow, you're a Mormon. Well, I don't agree with Mormonism, but I know we have some shared values. Maybe we could work on that together. Oh, you're Catholic. Well, I'm not Catholic. In fact, I'm not even Christian. And I have some problems with your religion. But you know what? You're a person, you might you might bring a valuable perspective. What do you got for me? Yeah. That used to be what a liberal was like, or even a progressive. That has completely changed now, and it is apparently okay to stereotype, mock, and even make things up about the religious. And that's okay, and that's just criticism. Yeah. One of the things I notice is this community can't handle any criticism or questioning of its core beliefs. Well, that's it. the problem kind of comes from both sides because I was telling you about the like a page is like the other 98% and then they have the memes it's all like science because you can't pray to outer space. It's just like so fucking stupid. But it's like they're being elitist to the other 80%. It's like why, why are they alienating this whole, this whole uh, demographic here, you know? But there was a lot of pushback with that, yeah. Well, and there needs to be more. I uh, Let's go ahead and watch a little more of this. There's a few things I want to comment on. Let's go. Now, for atheism and feminism, that movement came for me at one of the most respected atheist conventions of the time. Yeah, I remember this. It was and hilarious. What their time doing? I can't see the video. Making angry vaginas. Remember Rebecca Watson? Where you oh, Lord. Back and you simply have to be honest. So Surly Amy. Spent his time making angry vaginas, he's never going to achieve anything of worth. No, now, neither is atheism. Each of these trends, I <laughs> just sat here in the middle, unmoved by all this populist bullshit. Because I'm an old guy. I've been around. I've seen it again and again. It's not so much that grandpa's not hip enough to get with it. It's just that I've seen it all before. Now, for me and the anti-social justice warrior movement in the skeptic community, it all started off well. Hell, I should know. I was one of the first people there. Yes, you were, Dr. Mason. And actually, I watched what PZ Myers did to you. And uh, I remember thinking, well, that's vintage PZ Myers because uh, you were hardly the first person targeted for an SJW style attack. I was, and yeah. I knew, were even before the Atheism Plus. Because, see, one of the things you're going to notice about this community of yours, uh, Dr. Mason, is that uh, they often go after people and they don't always use nice tactics. They often destroy people for leaving atheism. They often destroy people for having politically the wrong opinions that aren't supposedly the right rationalist opinions. 
Um, you all do this. Well, just today, you, you, you're just today you posted, you posted um, something about a, a YouTube channel that got disappeared. Oh, you know? dude, no. Uh, I, I've posted many things about YouTube channels that get disappeared because Christian YouTube channels get disappeared constantly. Yeah. And so for all the claims of the atheist, skeptic, rationalist, gamergate, um, all the other people, Honey Badger Brigade, uh, all, uh, uh, Sargon, all you people talking about free speech and how there is no harassment. You don't say anything when religious people are lied about, harassed, and abused. Yeah. You also don't say anything about when the history of their religions are lied about, harassed, and abused, are lied about and abused. And by the way, you guys spread a lot of lies, historical lies, demonstrable lies about Christianity and its history. Yeah. And have you ever talked to anyone about that? Sir, I, you can not only talk to me, I'll get you some historians and others to talk to if you doubt it. Um, so I like how he, one of the things that was interesting is all these atheist YouTubers, I'll call them atheists, skeptics, what the fuck ever, um, all of them were figuring out that feminism was a bunch of bullshit. Um, that, you know, whatever is valuable in, in feminism, and it, you know, it can't be completely without value, but they're lying about the wage gap, and you know that now. They've been lying about domestic violence. You know that now, Dr. Mason. They've been lying about rape. They've been lying about most of the big feminist issues, and they lie about history. Um, the question you ought to be asking yourself is, is did the people who brought you the new atheism in the first place lie about anything? Because I'll tell you what it all looks like to me, Dr. Mason. You're good on military history. It's, a, it's an interest we share. Have you ever looked at what happened to the Mensheviks? I say that exactly that what the Bolsheviks did to the Mensheviks was exactly what was done to you. I would say that uh, what Lenin used to call useful idiots. Yes. We're one of those. You still kind of are. Yeah. You're hanging on to all the propaganda. And by the way, there was propaganda in the atheist movement from day one, back going all the way back to 2006 and all your heroes, demonstrable propaganda. Going back to the Soviet Union, I mean, yeah. Many, much of it is uh, directly traceable to old Comintern, KGB, and Soviet techniques. It's also directly tra traceable to anti-religious campaigns run by the Chinese, uh, anti-religious campaigns run by Pol Pot, anti-religious campaign run by right-wing fascists. By the way, it is a myth that all right-wingers are religious. No, the first time I got called a Christ cuck by a neo-Nazi atheist, Mm -hmm. It was proven to me that, yeah, no, you will find crazy, dangerous, psychotic atheists on the left and the right. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, uh, Richard Metzger. I think he's the, like the Aryan resistance or something. He's an outspoken atheist, yes. Oh, there's quite a few. Richard Spencer just mocks Christians all the time. Um, so you've got something you do, uh, even though you are absolutely in no way a neo-Nazi or sympathizer, Dr. Mason, you've got a lot in common with people like Richard Spencer. Deal with it. You do. And please don't weasel out by guilt by association and, and say, well, it's just guilt by association. Please don't weasel out. Stop, look, and think about all the presumptions you've made ever since you decided someone like Sam Harris or, or, or Richard Dawkins were heroes. Your heroes have feet of clay, too. Yeah. Let's, let's try watching a little more. By, by the way, uh, uh, first off, uh, you didn't put screen share on last time. I didn't? Ah, uh -huh. oh, dang it. Well, you know. But uh, I also just—I just want to say uh, uh, we, we're talking about both the left and the right, like almost purposefully alienating. <laughs> Hello, yes. the image. But yeah, we're talking about both the left and the right purposefully alienating Christians. But if, if you do a basic historical survey, you will find uh, Christianity is basically the best guarantor of political moderatism. In the actually... absence of that, yeah, you, you're going to go extreme left or extreme right. You know. Yep, and they like they like to talk about gay rights, but when you get past the propaganda and dig, I'll demonstrate this to anybody who wants me to. Your best protector of gay rights mm -hmm. is also going to be a Christian nation or a historian, historically Christian nation. And if you just roared and ran off to an atheist website or a so-called skeptic website or one of your favorite authors to so-called debunk that, stop yourself. Mm -hmm and ask, why do I automatically believe someone if he calls himself a skeptic or an atheist? Why? Why would you believe that? There's a lot of question. there's a lot to not just question what the new atheist movement said about Christianity and religion in general, there's a lot that can be completely debunked in their claims. And I can show that to you, and you don't have to come to Jesus, 
You don't have to come to Jesus at all. In fact, I'd rather you didn't at this point. Most atheists I know, I think, would be better off not becoming Christians. Just question your atheism for a year. And then after you're done questioning the atheism and feel comfortable doing it, start asking, does any spiritual tradition anywhere have any truth in it? Mm -hmm. And if they do, who's got more of it? That's it. Not asking you to come to Jesus. Yeah. Just not. Would rather you didn't. You'll probably because you'd probably turn into a fundamentalist nut and not really learn anything anyway. You gotta you gotta deprogram yourself. Anyway, let's look a little bit more about this man who is becoming more and more aware, but still can't make the leap to think maybe the atheist movement itself was always broken. Yes. Because by the way, it was. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. However, as time's gone on and it's got more popular, people have started progressively trying to inject more of their ideologies and narratives into the anti-social justice warrior movement. You know, like if you're anti-Trump, then you must be pro-social justice warrior. Like they couldn't make anyone who would ever think the president game show host was going to be a bad idea, who also thought that social justice warriors were talentless vermin. Yeah, yeah, it's true. People judge people by their actions and the people that they associate with. And before people start bleating, logical fallacy, guilt by association. Sorry, but that's how the human mind and humans work. You know, it's interesting that he's quoting Euripides here. I'm going to have to look. Was he one of the rare ancient Greek atheists? Because I'm pretty sure he was a theist. Perhaps. I don't know. Most of them were. In fact, a lot of these guys, I've noticed Sargon of Akkad doing this. I think Dr. Mason's done it. I'm not sure. Um, I've certainly seen others. They keep quoting Stoics because they love Stoicism, but what they don't know is that um, um, uh, people within the atheist movement have forwarded Stoicism, but they've erased all the theism. Yeah. Interesting because the early Stoics believed in God. You know, they didn't believe in the Jewish God or the Christian God. In fact, there was no Christianity at the time, but they believed in something they called God that they thought was pretty much what the Jews were talking about when the Jews talked about God. Um, the unmoved mover, the prime mover, the ultimate source for everything, yeah. uh, the thing controlling the universe. They had that idea. The Jews had it. The Zoroastrians had it. Bantu philosophers had it. This logically intuited idea that something must be running it all is normal in humans. And many of these ancient Greek philosophers that even some of you guys, quote, believed that. And they believed the same basic God idea that the Christians did. They didn't believe in Jesus, but they believed something was running things. They, they called it God. Look it up. I'll give you references. Um, otherwise, now let's just keep going here because I want to get to the juicy bits. It's so ingrained in our nature, we even have a saying for it. Birds of a feather flock together. And there's a good statistical grounds for beliefs like that. Just like if you want to go for, I don't really even any logical fallacies and say, for instance, you get sick and you say to yourself, yeah, but to go to a doctor would simply be an appeal to authority fallacy. Huh. Yeah, you're not going to live as long as someone who goes to see a doctor. So with the birds of a feather flock together, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, people have a reasonable expectation that it's a duck. So, for instance, if, like me, you're widely associated with the Sarkeesian effect, but you really don't want anything to do with the disaster that it became, yeah, it kind of falls on you to distance yourself from it. I'm glad he mentions this. I'm just going to mention real quick, I, I think Jordan Owen is the less, uh, less guilty of the parties on that one, but going into this Sarkeesian effect disaster, yeah, it's its own, its own thing. But... It's interesting that um, the, two, uh, the two guys he's talking about there, Joan and Davis Arini. Davis was a, a, a was a uh, an atheist and a so-called skeptic for the longest time. Um, then he converted and went back to Christianity. Um, I don't know how he's doing these days, um, but uh, nah, no one in the community likes him anyway. Let's keep going. Now, sure, this is a judgment call. And munchkins will try to use this device to ransom you into denying things, controlling what you're saying. Like the peons who decided to write to my employer calling me a Nazi. And they're going to call indignant saying, yeah, but he never came out and said that he wasn't a Nazi. 
Yeah, that's because no reasonable person ever thought I was one to begin with. And all you're really trying to do is to get me to say, yeah, I'm not a Nazi. So you can simply come out and say, well, that sounds like denial. Otherwise, why would you have to say it? Cool. So with Hey, Dr. Mason, do you know who else does that shit? Atheists do that shit all the time and have been doing it for more than 10 years to religious believers. Yes. They do it constantly. Oh, you're just a secret creationist. And if I respond and say, I'm not a creationist, I get, hmm, sounds like denial to me. When I tell them that they're reading the book of Genesis wrong and that they're reading it in ways that no, that most real Christians were rejecting, have been rejecting for 2,000 years, yes. that other Jews have rejected for longer than that. When I tell them they're wrong, they say, oh, you're just defending your religion. You're just defending your beliefs in the magic man sky fairy. Um, I'm sorry, but one of the things I keep pointing out to people, I pointed this out to Karen Strong, who of course had no opinion because she's perennially neutral on everything and takes no responsibility for what her community does. Um, uh, just like Honey Badger Brigade, well, and most of the other, every other atheist I know fails to take responsibility or even recognize that this happens. Um, but they impute nasty motives onto Christians constantly. They impute nasty motives onto other people constantly. And when we defend ourselves and tell you you've got something wrong, uh, what, the, what the atheist does is laugh and say more nasty things about us. Mm. Dr. Mason, have you ever done that? More to the point, have you ever noticed anybody else doing it? Because I see it all the fucking time in your community. It's one of the reasons I left. Um, these tactics are already found in the famous New Atheist books from Simon Harris, Christopher Hitchens, and, and Dawkins, and Bennett. Uh, we find it in Laird Krauss's work. We find it in Jerry Coyne's work. You name the atheist, with the possible exception of, 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 of Stephen Hawking, maybe. That kind of tactic you just described being used against you by feminists, atheists do it to the religious constantly. Mm. It's humanizing. It's inaccurate. And as a thought leader, I would think that somebody who was like, well, I'm an atheist, but I think it's irresponsible to lie so broadly about Christianity. I would think that if there were an honorable atheist, he would do that. I have yet to meet a single honorable atheist. And I count all of my friends or people I used to call friends among that group who will not speak. Yeah. It's okay. It's open season on religious people. Um, By the way, what? When you started this and you said uh, atheists do that too, I thought you were referring specifically to uh, calling up people's employers and harassing them. Oh, yes, they do call <laughs> people's employers and harass them. In fact, Dr. Mason, here's a chance for you to help a fellow uh, academic, Professor Stephanie Thomason, um, uh, who I've interviewed. Now, you can see the interview if you want. I'll even get you in touch with her. Um, she decided she believed in God, and she, in fact, eventually became a Christian. And uh, now they're trying to get her fired. For what? For being critical of atheism in the atheist community. They're trying to get an academic fired. She's protected by tenure, but not much else. Do you want to do anything about that? Will any of your community that cares about free speech and harassment actually step up and say, stop harassing Christians? Will you do that? I dare you. I want to hear an atheist do that. I have yet to hear any atheist I know do it. Have the balls to say, atheists, stop being assholes. Stop picking on people. Stop lying about Christianity and history. Stop lying about Christians today. Yes, we know there are nuts, but you know what? There are atheist nuts too. It's wrong to continually attack Christians. Well, you do that. Now, I'm not saying you continually attack us, but you should. You got a community that's dedicated to very little but attacking us, and then being quote unquote skeptical of anything. They're just. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anything that's that's negative about religion, you'll buy it. You won't be skeptical of it. That's yeah, my, yeah. that's what I find. I mean, sure, the most gross things. If somebody said Christians eat babies, you'd probably say, no, they don't do that. That's wrong. Yeah. How about the lies about science? How about the lies about repression? How about the lies about racism? How about the lies about slavery? How about all the lies in history? How about internet meme graphics saying Jesus didn't exist, which it, which has been a, 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 a historical laughing stock for at least a century? And those meme graphics are shared by by Facebook pages like a science enthusiast and the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Science and Reason. Yes, the Richard Dawkins Foundation shares uh, historically erroneous meme graphics, and atheists just eat it up with a spoon. They do. In fact, really well-respected atheist and agnostic biblical scholars will laugh at people or, or 
more than not just laugh, but gag at people like Richard Carrier, who, by the way, is in no way credible. Yes. PhD, just like Sam Harris, by the way, paper PhDs who make things up. And yes, I'll back that up in court. I can even back that up in British court. I know I would survive a libel suit by saying those. Mm -hmm. Prove that to you too. All right, let's give him a little more. I want to get to the real nasty stuff. It's probably another minute or two in, then we'll just talk. Atheism, there was this angry vagina moment for me. And now I've hit Green a share. point with the skeptical community here on YouTube. You see, there was this guy called the Skeptical Feminist, and he was the president of the Western Colorado Atheists and Freethinkers, who, by all accounts, got high on mushrooms. Uh, screen share, Max. And thought oh. one of the girls who he lived with was trying to kill him. So he shot her, and she died of her wounds in the car lot late. The guy who did the shooting himself was, by all accounts, a jerk. A hardcore jerk. Um, had the life of her children threatened in a credible way. Are you in favor of death threats to motherfucking children? Hey, fuckface, come at me, bro. Come on, come on. How about <laughs> you step up and you threaten a fucking adult, you worthless, squirmy, coward piece of shit? Come the fuck at me. But there's nothing to suggest that him being a feminist had anything more to do with this than him being the president of an atheist society. Bullshit. This is about a guy having a psychotic episode. Okay, this man wants to claim. Well, I don't know. He kind of weaseled it. There's nothing to suggest that his being feminist has anything more to do with this than his being the president of an atheist society. Well, I'll tell you what, son. I'll tell you what. Um, if you look at male feminists, you will find a lot of really creepy, weird guys. And you know this. Furthermore, as for the atheism, you cannot scientifically say it had nothing to do with it. You cannot, sir. And in fact, scientifically, we have all kinds of reason to believe the so-called skepticism, the so-called atheism had a lot to do with it because um, there's a high overlap between uh, mental illness and atheism. I'm sorry, but there is. I'm gonna stop screen sharing here, but I'm gonna bring up some some references for you. Um, see if I have them. I thought I had them all laid out. Now, I know one of the things that's going to come out here is somebody's going to scream, Conservopedia is not a source. Well, you know what? Yes, it is. It doesn't matter if you're conservative or not. The question would be, are the uh, are the references they're giving making any sense? Can you see this, uh, Rob? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, this is Conservopedia. Now, you're going to say they're conserv conservative and they're right-wing, so you can dismiss them. Um, that would be prejudice on your part. And yes, you're going to find things in uh, Conservopedia that are dumb. There's some real de some defenses of young earth creationism on there that uh, most Christians, us, and especially the scientists, the science mind that I know, would squirm at. Um, nevertheless, it is a point of view, and I would assume it should be represented somewhere. And in the meantime, that doesn't change the validity of the studies and the other information they have in other areas. Dr. Mason, there is an enormous overlap between atheism and depression, just enormous. There mm -hmm. is also an enormous uh, link between atheism and suicide. Um, Brett Keane did a real good video on this, uh, which Penn Gillette uh, actually lied about. He responded to Brett Keane on it and said, I've never seen that evidence. And then he was shown the studies and he ignored them. Um, Penn's, uh, Penn Gillette's one of those people who does like, by the way, to block anybody who challenges him. Um, it's, a, it's a trait he seems to share in common with Steve Shives, I think. Maybe not as, as blatant. But he especially yeah. doesn't like it when an old fan who was hanging out with him and his, well, not him personally, but hanging out in forums and uh, uh, promoting him and talking about how great he is. No. In fact, there is a huge, huge link between atheism, suicide, failed relationships. It's all there. It goes back centuries. Um, there, another page, the page on atheism and health has still more articles on poor health practices, alcoholism, drug addiction, and more related directly, correlated very strongly with atheism. Ditto atheism and suicide. Just look at the references on these pages. Now, you don't have to conclude that every reference is right or every inference is drawn is correct. 
you can't look at all of this and say there's no effect. Yeah. Um, you can't. Scientifically, you have no, you can't. The correlation is there. And typically, historically, what I find is that most, most atheists will claim that the problem is that religion made them psychotic and coming out of religion and becoming atheism, atheist, therefore makes you more clear-minded and sane. Yeah, and any remaining mental illness or other psychological problems they're having are due to the religion. That's been a trope in atheist circles since at least the 19th yeah. century. Well, that, that, that was kind of the, uh, uh, the Freudian notion that, that, uh, that religion is, is kind of a, a mass neurosis and we kind of sublimate our own personal neuroses in, the, in this kind of mass neurosis. Which can't be called anything but a, a faith belief because yeah. there's very little science to back it up. That really isn't. And you would think that by now, with 11 years now since the new atheist explosion, we'd have a whole crop load of young, happy atheists <laughs> um, uh, uh, exhibiting mental health, excellent mental health and scientific rationalism. And you don't. Yeah. You don't have anything like this. Yeah. I'm going to recommend another book, a book from a Christian I often disagree with. He's very critical of my, my, my Catholicism. I think he's not even a Trinitarian, which puts him outside of, of, of most mainstream Christianity, but he's still uh, an interesting guy. Uh, Vox Day wrote The Irrational Atheist. I'm going to recommend this book highly to Dr. Mason and his fellows. Well, there, there's one Trinity he believes in, yes. Yeah, well, to at least discover the other side of these arguments. And one of the things Vox Day also notes is that contrary to what you've heard, uh, while hardcore atheists, the ones who will really say there is no God, or I'm pretty sure there's no God, or you have to prove God to me before I'll believe it, those are all your hardcore atheists. Um, those people, uh, they do tend to be slightly, but only very slightly higher IQ, and that's because they mostly go to college. And it used to be that you had to have a real, reasonably good IQ to get into college. It's not true now, but it did used to be. And, and we're, we're talking a higher IQ on the order of three IQ points. Yeah. And yeah. It used to be the average college graduate was a little more likely to be an atheist. Yeah. There, you have to factor in the atheist indoctrination and the anti-religious indoctrination that's been part of many people's college educations, including mine, for decades. Exactly. I was taught anti-Christian propaganda and anti-religious propaganda in a modern university more than 10 years ago. I, I saw some of it, and I was an atheist, and I say, I know that's not true. Hmm. Um, so, and, and otherwise, what he also shows quite convincingly is that the non-religious, that is, whether they believe in anything or not, is all over the map, but they call themselves not religious, they attend no church, they don't read the Bible. Among those, they have an incredibly high rate of criminal activity, including rape, murder, and theft, and suicide. So, and, and, and when we mention this, I guess I'll just go ahead and mention one other book that I think everybody should read. I'm just going to type it up here. We need more uh, funding and resources, by the way. Please support us on Patreon. Uh, I, want you, I want to know, uh, Dr. Mason, do you think Justin L. Barrett is a pseudoscientist? Because if you do, we can stop talking right now. But if you do believe he's a real scientist, please read this book, sir, where you will find out that it is normal for people to be religious and that children develop spiritual beliefs and belief in something like God and the spiritual between the ages of two and four normally. And there is not a shred of evidence that that correlates with delusions or imaginary friends. Yeah. It's just not. And uh, given that there is rational evidence, even in current sciences, to say that something what most people would call God an intelligent thing running the cosmos, that's a normal thing to believe in science. That's respectable mainstream science in physics. Sorry, but it is. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's a sensible belief in a lot of other areas of science, too. That something creative is drawing this. You don't need Michael Behe's weird intelligent design arguments. He's not that sophisticated, actually. I will just point out, as I've pointed out to so many other nerds, what smart people have meant by God for more than 3,000 years, actually probably more like 9,000 years, if not longer, we can document going at least back to 9,000 years ago, have always believed God may be known by various names, but it's the thing controlling reality. Yes. Running all of it. And you say there's no evidence for that. Well, there is evidence for it. You just don't find it convincing. There's lots of evidence for it. And there's evidence we were born with a sense for it. 
And so, and so the new atheists have to characterize God as an invisible sky fairy to make the claim of his existence sound less less uh, credible than it really is. Yeah. Because it makes perfect sense that, yes, there is a first cause that is not material, that is not temporal, that brought time and space into being. As Aristotle would have said, who was no Christian or Jew, yes. um, you, you know, you need an unmoved mover. Yeah. Something's got to be ultimately responsible for all this working the way it does and continuing to work the way it does. Yeah. And that view is perfectly compatible with all of science, by the way. Yeah. There is no science with, which it is not compatible with. I dare you to find me. Um, so this is not an irrational belief. It, it can conflict with science even in principle. That's right. And I will point to you throughout all of history interesting fascinating people who are not christians who were nevertheless uh believed in god or some higher purpose to the universe and and held that things like honor and integrity and any sense of objectivity you necessarily had to posit a god something above human reason in order to get anything coherent harry truman was a great u.s president according to most people um he was not a religious man and was not really a christian but he got along fabulously well with both Protestant and Catholic Christians. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Well, I was also going to bring up the founding fathers, who, of the course. The founding fathers, too. Yeah. Most of the founders, some of the founders were actually very religious, but most of the really famous ones were not particularly religious. Theistic, yeah. But they still believed in God and believed it was important to believe in God. They absolutely did. Um, and. This helped them, believe me, because I got to tell you right now, uh, Dr. Mason, as a father with children, children I did not indoctrinate, that I simply asked if they believed in a higher being, if they asked them if they believed that, said yes. The younger one said yes sooner rather than later. Um, and were asked if they wanted to go to church and say yes. Yeah, I'm a father. And these are smart kids with high IQs and they believe in God. And having you people treat them like they're retards and worthy of scorn and contempt. Yeah, well, I got into men's rights because I wanted to protect my son's rights. Now I got into this because I want to protect my son's rights. Yeah. You people need to stop acting like you are the superior intelligences of the galaxy and everybody's just got to catch up with you and be atheist like you and dismiss all evidence against atheism like you before you'll even treat them like adults. That's what's visible about you and your and your and your entire coterie here on YouTube, Dr. Mason. It really is. I've yet to hear you talk to a smart Christian. And by the way, you don't have to talk to me, although you can. I think you'll find me interesting. But you don't have to talk to me. I can recommend all kinds of people who are at your level or higher who will school you on why it's wrong to treat religious people like they're retarded, which is pretty <laughs> much what your entire movement's been about for about 11 years now. All right, ranting on. Let's give him a little more time. I'm about two more minutes of this, and then we'll we'll just stop watching. Here we go. With a gun to pin this act on feminism. Make Green chair a thunderfoot. On a pin the Elliot Rogers shooting as an act of misogyny. Because while Elliot Rogers ran before his shooting spree was a pretty good description of misogyny. It's clear that the guy had a lot of psychological issues. Again. Yeah, he also went out of his way to kill a number of men. But anyway, let's keep going. Not really someone who you want to have access to guns. Now, you might think that saying having a law that says people who are psychologically unstable should not have access to guns would be a contentious issue. But apparently not. It, it it shines a large spotlight on the issues involving PTSD and drug usage. Many people out there have already heard uh, argue that this is another, you know, thing that could have been provide or prevented if Alexander didn't have a gun. Well, would it have been? Look, Second Amendment away, guys. I'm have not really going to take the bait of arguing with Second about Amendment guns with him to the point where you're saying that even crazy people should have the right to own guns. Then you've left. The path of wisdom. Look, let me make this simple for you. If you have to face a crazy person, would you rather face a crazy person with a gun or a crazy person with a knife? A gun is what's called a force amplifier. And as force amplifiers go, guns are pretty good. 
This is why we give the army guns, because no sane person would say, yeah, but if we didn't give them guns, they would just find another way of doing the killer. Oh, wow. I mean, this is a... We should have skipped over all the gun stuff, to be honest, because I don't want to take the gun bait. But I just want to say, uh, Dr. Mason, have you considered what a nihilistic, skeptical worldview might do to a crazy person one way or the other, whether he had a gun or not? Hmm. Let me point out something about skepticism. Okay, now, ideologically, since about the 70s, and there's a number of sources I can show you on this, and ideologically, the skeptic movement sort of started in the 70s. I mean, you can find it before that, but it kind of got bigger in the 70s. And what they called skepticism meant skeptical of claims of the supernatural or of God. A lot like Yuri Geller and guys like that. They're not talking about, they're not talking about, you know, I always say uh, Yuri Geller is not Aristotle. You debunk Yuri Geller. You don't debunk Aristotle, you know. You can't debunk Aristotle. In fact, Dr. Mason, you'd become a better chemist if you studied Aristotle. I mean it. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, that said, oh, I don't Skeptic. know where to go with this ball of fuck because he, he, he doesn't want to acknowledge, none of this community wants to acknowledge that skepticism is always 100% selective. Look it up in a dictionary. Look it up in any dictionary, in anything on philosophy. Um, skepticism is 100% arbitrary. The so-called skeptics started about being skeptical of any claim of the spiritual or paranormal. And then it became sort of the default everything. We will always be skeptical of such claims, and we will always marshal evidence against such claims. And that's what they do. But in re And so they're actually ideological atheists. That's almost all skeptics. Please don't try the familiar lie that there are religious skeptics. No, your movement's been pushing the so-called religious skeptics out for decades, and there's pretty much none left. You might find one or two says he's a Methodist or something. Scratch him hard, you'll probably find he's one of those so-called Christians who doesn't really believe and thinks he's just in a club. And there's hardly even any of those left. You have sucked everybody out of your movement except hardcore religion haters, and that's what skepticism has become. Mm. In reality, if you learn about skepticism, you can be skeptical of anything for any reason at any time. There's nothing scientifical about skepticism. There's nothing logical about a skepticism. There's nothing even evidence-based about skepticism. Skepticism is choosing to disbelieve a proposition or choosing to dismiss a proposition. It's all it is. It's all yeah. it's ever been. You can apply skepticism to anything, by the way, including to so-called professional skeptics and atheists. Now, when you, you can still you can still hold a position while holding it up to examination. That's right. I, I, I can be a Christian while asking why am I a Christian? Are there good reasons to be a Christian? Yeah, so I can be skeptical of my own position. Skepticism absolutely led, led me to religion. And by the way, I know Orthodox Jews will tell you the same damn thing, and I know Muslim. I've heard Muslims say the damn thing, same damn thing. At some point, you guys are going to have to get used to the fact that smart people think something's running reality. That's even a that's even respectable view in current physics. What's your problem with it, and why do you got to call us all idiots, or hang out with a con uh, with people who do, blah blah blah. So anyway, when you teach skepticism to moderate to low IQ people and mentally undamaged people, which obviously these skeptic pe feminist people were and are, um, what you teach them is that they get to dismiss any idea they don't like. That's what you get to do when you're a skeptic. If you don't like the idea, you will skeptic get away. Yeah. And what invariably happens when you embrace this mindset and the nihilist mindset that is atheism is you inevitably conclude that there is no actual ultimate morality that goes with virtually all atheism. And I have yet to hear an atheist coherently explain what, you know, if anything's truly moral and if mm -hmm. anything's truly immoral, most will say it's all relative in a matter of opinion. And yes, you'll all get angry and pound your fist and say, oh, but you know murder's just not acceptable. Dude, you people will laugh when somebody gets killed. And you'll make jokes about throwing people out of helicopters. And you're joking, but when I listen to you, I don't think you're all really joking. Let's go get to the little more part of this, and then we'll stop bugging Dr. Mason and talk generally. But yes, Dr. Mason, think about what the nihilism of atheism does, and think about what teaching stupid people that being skeptical, just being skeptical of things, automatically makes you brilliant do you not think that would do anything to a psychotic individual with ptsd and other issues and maybe a low iq because again dr mason you could be skeptical of anything for any reason at any time so when you call yourself a skeptic what you're really often doing is just arrogating to yourself the role of smartest most knowledgeable people and person in the world and you get to say what's right and wrong yeah 
get a little drunk and decide the bitch needs to die? Well, why not? It's a logical proposition. The world would be better, right? Or, you know, maybe it was self-defense. Maybe she was going nuts on him and, 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 he, and he, you know, he was defending himself. We don't know that. But what kind of psychotic argument starts that way? Uh, usually it's among people who think they ultimately know right from wrong and everybody else is stupid. So, yeah, I'm going to say it again. The atheism had a lot to do with this. And it's not because you didn't have Jesus. Hell, if he'd been a deist who understood principles like, you know, moral law above individual men or vague theist, moral law above individual men, he might have been stopped. If somebody had talked to him and just said, you know what, skepticism doesn't mean anything. You can be skeptical of anything. Watch out, you know, bro. Um, watch your assumptions. Um, no, none of that. Everyone was just talking about how skepticism is great. Oh, my God. And that's it. It's all, what they mean by skepticism is almost invariably atheism and the presumption that there's no moral standards above what I myself as the skeptic will say is moral or not. Yeah. I an exception. I dare you to find me an exception, Dr. Mason. All right, let's do a little more. If of skepticism I'm only meant a uh, uh, skepticism, perf uh, 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 you know, just, just in the proper sense of the word, there could be no such thing as a skeptic community. That's right. Yep. All right. Let's go about one more minute. This is a psychotic episode brought on by hallucinogens and a pre-existing pre mental condition. Pre-existing mental condition like, uh, you know, nihilist skeptic atheism could be part of it, Matt. Uh, if it wasn't a gun, he might have grabbed something else. So you can't really argue the anti-gun narrative here. We shoot them guns because the guns are the best. Ah, screw this. I don't want to hear him talking about so guns. If you want to remove a false amplifier from crazy people, that does entail that you've got to do things like background checks on people. Yeah, so this okay. this skeptical feminist shooting was probably an unfortunate tragedy of someone who probably wasn't all with it. Probably. Love all those those weasel words. Is there any possibility that a nihilist, I know better than every other human being mindset was part of this? Just curious, Dr. Mason. So how did YouTube's skeptical community deal with this? How did YouTube's skeptical community deal with this? Here's where I want to make the point. Dr. Mason, this is what the atheism looks like. And um, what's worse is when I look at this, it's not even as bad as the atheism gets, but I want everybody to listen to this carefully. By the way, is that TJ Kirk's voice or somebody else's I hear on there? I don't know. Let's give this a listen. Uh, a lot of feminists got triggered. Yeah. Ah, for the soon. final time. For the it's last time. Soon come. <laughs> as, as I said before, like too soon is literally five seconds before it happens. That's when it's too soon. Yeah. So it's, as well. But I, I want to say, can I can I praise the shooter really quick? Is that TJ? <laughs> the I don't think so. Area of the internet we inhabit tends to be populated by people who do have high expectations of these content creators <laughs> and I, I think i think that's probably the one thing that really unites everyone in what could be called the skeptic community is so as well but i, I want to say can i can i praise the shooter really quick <laughs> can i can i just say that at least he didn't take any shit is that <laughs> is it it's too soon to say that you wasn't a cock yeah Sorry, guys, but if your response to an unbalanced guy picking up a gun and blowing away an innocent girl is joking about it or the body's even cool. Yeah, Dr. Mason, and that's really horrible. And this is what atheism looks like. This is what so-called skepticism looks like. This is what so-called rationalism looks like. This is what your community has always looked like and has been for a long time. You know, every time I hear Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon Avakad, make a joke like throwing people out of a helicopter, I actually know in my heart he would do it. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I think he would. I think he'd do it to anybody who annoyed him. Um, because what I have found for years after years and years, not only of having been an atheist, but had many atheist friends and many so-called skeptic friends, what usually hits the skeptic mind or the atheist mind first when they're upset is, how can we get rid of or destroy this thing that's mm. annoying me? I see it in every atheist I know, even people I've liked and, and been friends with, like Karen Strawn and Paul Elam. Um, Hardcore atheists, uh, uh, and if they don't indulge in Christian bashing, they certainly uh, look the other way at it most of the time and will never correct historical uh, uh, inaccuracies. Um, they all, all, everybody, the Honey Badger Brigade, uh, Kraut and T, um, Vernac, almost anybody you name who self-identifies this way, their go-to to fix anything is to destroy whatever they don't like. Find yes. You can actually build things. Very hard to do. 
very hard to do. They unite around what they hate. So that's very handy when you're against something like feminism to have one of these people on your side because they're fearless warriors and they'll sh shred anybody or anything because they're good at it. Um, but all they have the ability is to shred things and make fun of things and mock things. They almost never bring anything real to the table. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to think of a, an exception. Even the best sarcastic, uh, um, ironic, satirical content is almost always just dedicated to tearing things apart, deconstructing them, mocking them, and savaging them. Actually, yeah. bringing new ideas, you're almost all helpless. You yeah. Do it. And the one thing you're all terrified of doing is talking to somebody who's not an atheist, who is, in fact, very seriously religious and may have insights into the universe for you. Yeah. Do that. I'm waiting to see it. You know how I'll know Dr. Mason's really changed? When he finds a theist, a seriously religious person who's as smart as him in his own field of science and his own area and really talks to him on a video. And they're not hard to find. No, they're actually not. I'll personally <laughs> make up introductions if you want. Um, the bottom line, I'm going to say again, from both a logical personal experience and scientific research standpoint, there is every reason to think irreligiosity makes people unstable, that some sort of religion is natural and healthy in humans, and that when you deny it, they get a little nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe if you've had bad experiences with religion, you should go look for religions that are 100% science friendly, and those exist, and uh, that aren't crazy, that aren't crazy. And if you think there are no non-crazy religious people, you're a bigot, sir. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to get any headway against feminism, I'm going to put this out to other atheists I know, everybody I've named in this video and others besides, the any of you, until you learn to talk like mature adults and not condescending patricians to the religious, no one has any reason to trust you people or believe what you have to say or want you as an ally in the fight. We just don't. Why would we want you? Well, we're going to put the atheists in charge so that after you're done doing with the Muslims in, you'll do us and our kids in too. Is that hyperbole? I don't think so. Look how people talk in your community about re-educating our children. Yeah. Uh, it makes me sick that I used to promote, that I used to be part of this community. And it makes me sick that after I left it, I still promoted people like Sargon and Dr. Mason and all that. But none of them would ever question their beliefs about religion. None of them would ever question their beliefs about their atheist heroes. None of them would ever question their own presumptions and biases about human psychology and history. None of them will do it. And none of them got the balls to talk to, not debate, but really talk to people who say they're dead wrong. People who are as smart as them. They won't do it. None of them will. Richard Dawkins won't do it, by the way. Um, uh, they would usually only do it in very controlled debate environments. Um, skepticism and atheism had a lot to do with this, I assert. And I've got evidence on my side that it did. And you're, if you're going to just attempt to dismiss the evidence, I call you science denier because I've got science to back me up. I don't know what else I want to say, except I do know, and I may do a hangout with Jack Barnes, who used to work with me on, on certain men's projects. He wants to talk about this, too. The men's rights movement, um, early on, people like Paul Elam and even Karen Strawn recognized there might be a problem with doing nothing but bringing in atheists to talk about the feminist problem or the social justice problem. But that's all gone out to the window. And you YouTube skeptics slash atheists seem to think you're going to lead us all into the bright future to oppose the excesses of postmodernism. Not, and some of you even have given up and said the postmodernist social justice left is gonna win and that it's inevitable. And you say this, well, you say this because there's nothing to oppose them. You know what the real issue is? You say this because you can't imagine talking to intelligent religious people who might have a point of view and resources and ideas and things to offer that would help in the fight which wouldn't require you to become a fundamentalist Christian or a creationist or any of that. In fact, here's a proposal. Even meet a crazy young earth creationist. Even if you meet one of those, you know what? If he's with you on other things, why wouldn't you at least talk to him? You guys inhabit a bubble, all of you. I can give you reading after reading after reading, reference after reference after reference. So can, so can Rob here, so can other people I know, so can scientists I know. 
you people have an ideology. The ideology is called new atheism, and it's entirely ideological. It's based on pseudoscience, pseudo history, and arrogance. And your tea, and, and that's all well and good when you're a very civilized, college educated Englishman, I guess. Um, but you know, the great teeming masses, uh, you teach them skepticism, and all you're telling teaching them is I get to believe whatever I want and disbelieve whatever I want. Yeah. And it always swirls into madness and moral relativism. And by the way, high rates of alcoholism, suicide, drug use, and more. Uh, and that's because ample science suggests people need human spirituality. And maybe you should just stop just shitting on spiritual people and ask, who's got the spiritual beliefs that I can live with? You'll do better. I promise hmm. you. You might even meet the social justice left. Now, we've already got an hour, and I know I've dominated this, but, Rob, I felt so bad about it because I used to be fans. I used to be friends. I, I feel like I was enablers to a lot of these people. Yeah. And atheism is as much full of shit as feminism is because yeah. it's a belief. It's a belief that there's no God and that throughout all of history, crazy, stupid religious people have had dumb ideas, and now science has fixed that. Science and rationality and evidence have fixed that problem. Yeah. And that's all narrative. Even the and, and it's, it's given a bunch of uh, really undeserving people these kind of savior complexes, you know. They have, they have uh, savior complexes. Good word. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring atheism to the world and make everybody smart on science. Yeah, it hasn't worked that way, has it? Yeah. I do another video. I can make an entire video on all the damage well-known skeptics and atheists have actually demonstrably done to science. But let's wrap this up. You got anything else you want to add, Rob? I, I'm good. I'm good. All right, next time we're probably going to talk about Atheist Republic and also a guy named Godless Engineer who's got some... <laughs> um, the most boring, um, yes. Please subscribe to Rob's channel, Deflating Atheism, and support him on Patreon. Please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Support us on Patreon or go to escapingatheism.com. We need your tips. We need your patronage. We need your support. Um, we're always willing to talk with smart atheists. V. Monroe's not too bad. Um, although he's hardly covered himself in glory this this last couple of weeks. But still, atheists, the door is open for you to talk to intelligent religious people who don't want to convert you. I don't want to convert you. I don't think Rob wants to convert you. I think we want you all to stop being such shallow assholes and bigots, because that's what most of you are. Seriously, it's just what you are. And it's not that we hate you. It's just we cannot believe you are this blind and this much in a bubble. Yeah. Consider that your movement always had a problem and that maybe bigotry and violence and hedonism are all part of it. Just a thought. All right. Anyway, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. And uh, God bless everybody. Have a good night.